Okay, today we're here to review my aerobic training block. I often get many questions about my aerobic training block and why I actually do it the way I do it. Um, some of these things I've invented, many I've stole, so I'm not saying that um, this is all my material. These have also been ideas from my assistants and feedback from athletes over the course of 17 years of coaching. So, um, I first want you to understand my definition of functional reserve range of the heart rate. Let's say we have two twins and one twin has a resting heart rate of 65 and the other athlete, his brother, let's say would have a resting heart rate of 32. Now, if they both take the lactate threshold test and their lactate threshold uh, in the first athlete is 165, and the other one is 172, what you have is, is in the functional reserve range is a difference from 65 to 165 is 100 and athlete 2 is basically 140. It's a completely difference um, in, your rest, in your beats of your functional reserve range of 40 beats. Why is this important? This tells me that your athlete can handle much more stress uh, athlete number two here. So with that being said, the athlete that has the functional reserve rate of 140 versus his brother can handle the stress of the workout. So if they do the same workout, this athlete may take days to recover, this one may take hours to recover. And this just lets them recover faster and manage the stress because the impact of the workout is not the same on each of these athletes. So, um, if you can lower resting heart rate and increase lactate threshold, you can increase the athlete's function, um, basically their ability to handle the stress. Now, what we're finding out with many team sports and the research is indicating that repeated sprint ability, or I call it repeated max effort ability, whether you're benching for a max effort or sprinting for a max effort. What you need is the ability to repeat that effort and what the research is showing, and for example in soccer, the team that runs the fastest at the end of the game is the one that's able to um, usually win if the skill sets are relatively close. Now here's the big thing on this. So do you need to be in great shape? Yes. But how you do it, it's not just running long distance. Um, the, the big thing here we want you to realize is that all systems recover and rely on the aerobic training system. Even your ATP, creatine phosphate stores, replenish faster with a bigger aerobic system. And we're talking you can do more max effort lifts. Even if you're a power lifter, you can get more max effort lifts. Now, the importance of aerobic training in this functional reserve range, it, it really came from my, my seeking the concept to being able to handle more training loads over time and time again. So increase, increasing my ability or my athlete's ability to train more. So what happened was I, uh, the previous year I didn't, I've, uh, I had completed auto regulation training where basically the athletes would hit, um, for a set, they'd hit clusters. So they do one rep and then they'd rest four or five seconds or 10 seconds and do another one. And they would do singles until, basically until the bar slowed down. And what transpired was I, uh, the year before they usually hit about eight to 10 singles and then the bar would slow down. So that would be the end of the set. Now what transpired with uh, motivation from Yuri Verkashansky um, he was a Russian high jump coach, um, and he talked about building the aerobic base. So all I did was basically do an aerobic base for two weeks in training, and what transpired was the next year, even my first year kids and fourth year kids essentially doubled their ability almost to do singles without dropping off with speed. So the biggest difference was the ATP system was recovering much, much faster with this aerobic base. Okay, now the big conundrum for many people is I want to build an aerobic base without running miles and miles. I remember uh, coming to the University of Minnesota 
and that's all the physiologist could think about was running miles for building an aerobic base and, and you're like well I have a 300 pound shot putter that's not going to work so um, this is part of the sol problem solving process in this development of um, the aerobic training system. Now um, the goal of the training block is to cause cellular adaptations. Um, these adaptations come from the AMPK enzyme and what happens is uh, you get huge adaptations in the heart and the muscle and various uh, areas of the body. Now the muscle cells will build more, build more mitochondria. You also get enlargement of the heart. Um, the vascular system improves its efficiency and its pliability and its thermal dynamic effect, um, especially from the arteries, blood vessels, and capillaries. Now, during these two to three weeks in, um, I don't know if I say this later, but two to three weeks is about your limit because for sprint athletes, after that I really didn't get much return on spending a whole nother week training. So if you went to four weeks and five, there was really minimal return. So the biggest thing about this aerobic training block is that we spend um, most of the time between 110 and 170 and most of my athletes lactate thresholds would be below 170 or close to that range or I'm sorry above it so um, but you in the aerobic range you want to stay between these two so you stay below the lactate threshold now one thing that we do and we'll talk a little bit more about that later is we put tape over mouth to enforce proper breathing patterns through the diaphragm and belly breathing it doesn't force belly breathing but what it does is um, you use your nostrils, uh, which causes an increase of uh, CO2, and which then is called the Bohr effect. If you increase CO2, it increases your body's ability to carry more oxygen. And actually, by breathing through your nose, it expands navel cavities, which is has amazing benefits in athletes. Um, and one of the books I would highly recommend is Oxygen Advantage to Increase and I kinda took this whole system of Oxygen Advantage and it started from a asthma doctor in the Soviet Union who who created these concepts and and, and claims he got rid of asthma in a hundred a hundred thousand patients so um, this is a, uh, a unique tool and I'll explain how I integrate it as we go I often do barefoot training um, in your facility in my facilities on this block so I train proprioception um, trying to strengthen the, the joints in regards to the feet so that they can jump more and do more plyometrics um, through the uh, through the course of their training future training blocks because if their feet are strong then they have the ability to uh, to handle more training and jumps I we also coach pushing through the big toe and squeezing the glute if you want to look up the RPR glute glute uh, pattern work you can and you can uh, see the coaching points on that. These are the five methods of training that we do and I'll go over each one of them. Um, I'll at least get through the contralateral circuit here in a uh, on this first half of the video. This is one of the most beneficial ones by all means. Now here's basically how I do a uh, a five-day plan and this works in my setting and not that you can't do it the contralateral every day athletes probably they get a little bored maybe but some of them don't some of them really enjoy it you can mix super endurance over here or the EDT method that I hear um, over here too you don't have to do the isometric holds I'm just giving you an example of what I do so I basically do contralateral on Monday always Wednesdays and Fridays in a team setting there's a big circuit set up and then I'll do iso holds here um, on Tuesday, Thursday, because the kids come in on their own and they're uh, having uh, the ISO holds. And I'll, when I get to the ISO holds, I'll, I'll explain why I do those. Mine are a little different than some people would assume. Uh, but anyway, this is a weekly plan. It doesn't have to follow like this. You can use any of these methods that work best for your scheduling and your kids. So with the contralateral circuit, and basically, when you if you download the the talk you can click on it and what basically you'll see it gives you directions and the contralateral circuit there's different levels but I usually start at level two or three right away and by the end of the week we're at level four 30 seconds on 10 seconds off and if you want a timer it's right here 
and you can put over your whole weight room but basically we have a um, video for these you can actually print this off when you click on it and type in the um, the station but reverse lunge right band row so you can see it's left leg right um, arm or left arm pulling right band lunging um, it's the opposite so you can print this off use it yourself if you want it has suggested weights the 25 and the 15 here are weights for females and males but you can see these are very dynamic and I'll tell you why they are like that here in a second now you saw that that exercise basically if you take a left leg lunge and a right arm row and then you do you do 20 to 30 seconds on and then 10 seconds off all the blood goes to the left leg and right um, arm and then when you take the 10 seconds off and switch to the other side you basically get a peripheral heart training effect so what happens is the heart actually has to get good at moving blood in one direction and then the vascular system and everything switches it to the other areas and uh, obviously that's feedback and feed uh, feedback loop from the muscles but ultimately you're teaching the vascular system to become more efficient at moving the blood around because for example if you just run straight ahead what transpires is all you get is a continuous blood flow to that area well this circuit teaches the the vascular system to move blood all over and become more efficient and stress that system so you become very efficient um, it's crazy because I've had uh, extreme ultra distance swimmers um, cross-country runners go into this circuit and just get beat up why I, I'm not sure because of the blood flow thing I, I don't know why but it does help them build a larger base for their aerobic capacity um, now, if remember, if you're doing this with your uh, uh, with the right breathing stuff that I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, your athletes might not be moving that fast, and it won't look like they're working that hard. But their heartbeats will be about 160, 170. You you may even have to tell them to take a little rest, let them get down to 110, 120 before they can go again. Now, if you can't do the contralateral circuit that I give you, there's 25, 30 lifts on there total. You can basically simplify this whole contralateral circuit into Oops, sorry three lifts you can do a lunge with a band press you can do the step up with with a shoulder press you can do the lunge with a band row and you can just keep repeating that you can do left leg right arm then switch left leg right arm and then switch left leg right arm and then switch so you got six lifts total but it's really three now what we'll do is we'll hold breath why we do this okay now what transpires is your heart rates get really jacked up and people won't believe me but my oxygen saturation levels in my athletes when we do this drop now here's the key to holding breath you actually have to hold your breath with your all the air blown out of your lungs because if you hold your breath with all the air in your lungs guess what happens your oxygen levels never drop so what you have to do so on the third exercise let's say so you do three exercises in a row and then on the third one for 30 seconds if you hold your breath with all the air out your oxygen levels drop and what what I actually have is a huge amount of my athletes whose heart rates go up so we're actually going pretty slow on this circuit because their heart rate is extremely high for minimal work um, one of the biggest things and I'll get more into actually why we probably had al altitude sickness with some of our athletes in this we know we are bringing the uh, the benefits of altitude training into the gym when you hold your breath with your air out now the other thing about the contralateral is if you just google cross call benefits or concepts you will see some of the the neurological benefits in regards to this contralateral circuit um, we've seen these we've measured balance in our athletes um, and then the other thing is use RPR glute pattern concepts if you want to google that um, feel free RPR glute pattern concepts uh, on YouTube uh, there's videos of this in regards to the uh, the the way to coach the exercises